All right, good afternoon. Welcome to Sociology One. Uh, people in here you may not know we're being recorded now. You can see the screen over there, but there's various uh, cameras around. I don't know if they still even air it on the Comcast channel or whether it's all just recorded now for the people in the class, but uh, as of last minute, they were still airing it on TV, so if you're in this class, you might be on TV, but don't worry about it, nobody watches it as short as I can tell. Um, anyway, uh, full class we got here. Um, if you're at home, this is your first uh, recorded lecture you're watching, and so you'll be checking in this way, and you in here will be just just like a regular course for you. But both uh, groups, the, I call the people at home TV land, you guys are, you can say hi TV land, and you guys are the live students. Uh, Jeanette uh, has put everybody in the same section. So you'll be getting announcements. I may ask her to change that, but most of the time I'll be talking to the online or the TV land people through Canvas, and, uh, but you'll need to log on there too. For example, one thing that's there now is the welcome announcement, which I'm clicking on here. If you can bring up my computer screen, there it is. So that's what you'd see in Canvas. We got a little welcome announcement here. Did you in here, anybody see this welcome announcement already? I thought that it would email you when you get an announcement like this. No, you have, I guess not. So you'll have to get in the habit of logging on to Canvas too if you want to stay in contact with this class. What I posted already, there's the syllabus. I did not print out a syllabus for everybody. We're trying to save paper and ink here at the school and save taxpayers money. So we're asking that students themselves um, uh, um, we're asking that students themselves, uh, when they can, download these syllabi. If you need me to print one out for you, I guess I can. I'm not sure why it's printing out this way. Okay, here we go. So here's our syllabus. One of the things you need to begin taking note of, and can everyone see that, or should I make it bigger? All right, so... The, here's some vital information for you to know. Hopefully it's all correct there. Uh, best way to reach me in any case for anybody in live or TV land is email. And there's my email there. And if you go and download the syllabus, uh, you'll get it. You might want to write down that email right now in case for whatever reason you have trouble logging into Canvas or don't know how to get the syllabus or don't remember what I said. That's the best way to reach me right now. And uh, let's see here. I guess I'm going to get ready to read roll here in a second. Um, so a syllabus, if you're not too clear on what a syllabus is or what they mean for you, I like to think of them as a contract for a class. And so at the very beginning of a class, you're kind of working out a contract with your professor over what are they going to do for you and what are you going to do in return? And so it's kind of like a deal we're trying to agree on here. And uh, if you can agree to the things that this syllabus is asking you to agree to, if you can commit to them, then you should stay in the class. If you don't think you can or want to commit to them, then you shouldn't stay in the class. But by agreeing to be in the class and staying enrolled in it, in a sense, you're agreeing to what this syllabus is asking you. I'm not going to read the whole course description. It, gets into the question of what is sociology. And if you have no idea what sociology is, is, is at this point, that's OK. Uh, it's going to take basically this whole semester for me to answer this question, what is sociology? That's what an introductory class is all about, is answering that question. And sociology is such a big field that it's sometimes really hard to say what it is. Um, it's almost easier to say what it doesn't look at rather than what it does look at. 
But um, we'll try to give a more or less coherent answer to that question. What is sociology over the course of the semester? If you don't know yet, that's fine. Like I say, people who've studied, I have a PhD in sociology, meaning I studied it quite a bit and I can't always answer that question. What is sociology? So I don't expect you to be able to do it right off the bat. But um, more or less the short answer to that question is that sociology studies social groups. And uh, you know, uh, in our society, we tend to focus much more on ourselves as individuals than as members of social groups. And so the challenge of this class is getting you to think like a sociologist does when every other force in American life is trying to get you to think not like a sociologist, like our TV, our newspapers, our advertising. A lot of that is more gearing you to think not like a sociolo sociologist thinks. But this is a good year to be a good semester to be thinking sociologically because we as a whole country are in the midst of an election year and we're asking as a country, what direction do we want to go? Are we happy with how the country is or what do we think is wrong with it? How do we want to change our society or not? What do we want to keep the same? And since the whole country is asking those exact questions, it's a good time for college students to be asking them. And so hopefully this semester we're going to spend a lot of time thinking about the election, the campaigns going on, and how those uh, tie in with the kinds of questions we're asking about in here. I sometimes feel like, finally, America has gotten around to talking about things we've been talking about in Social One for a long time. I've been teaching this class for, I think, uh, oh, how long, about 15 years now. I've been teaching more or less this class, and we've always been talking about globalization and trade and changing gender relations and changing gender relation, uh, race relations. and. Uh, immigration and a lot of the issues that sociology talks about the country is really talking about right now and so um, maybe people are listening listening a little more to sociologists than they always have sociologists haven't always done a great job of talking to American people but that's why people don't always know well what is a sociologist what do they do I don't know if I asked you what so psychology was you probably have a pretty good idea what a psychologist is and what they do or an economist or a historian all of those are related to sociology, but when people ask, what is sociology, they don't always know. And so this semester, we're going to be trying to figure that out, but in so doing, also trying to figure out what is American society all about. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. And because American society is more and more in part of a global society, we're also going to be asking about that. How is the globe becoming really one big society nowadays? All right, so you can read that on your own time, although I pretty much talked a lot about it. One of the first things you need to do is try to get a hold of this textbook. You should be able to get it. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Some of you will be mad at hearing this little secret. But you don't necessarily need the newest edition of this book to be able to do well in this class. Um, the way I teach this class is most of it is lecture based. I'm going to be doing a lot of lecturing in this class. So one thing you need to be able to do is take good notes on all the things I'm going to be talking about. And one of the bad things is I have really bad handwriting. So you're going to have a hard time following my handwriting. But that's one of the main things you need to do. I wouldn't test you on something if it's in the book, but I didn't talk about it. On the other hand, if I talked about something but it's not in the book, I might test you on it. So that's telling you that the lectures are really important for your success on the exams. The book can help you with that and I certainly encourage you to get the most recent edition because it's got the most up-to-date information. If you really want to learn about American society, this book has a lot more information than I can possibly give you myself. So there's a lot in here that you should know even if you don't get tested on it. And um, you shouldn't just use what the professor requires you to know to be your guideline for what you should know. You should always want to know more than you know now, whether you're getting tested on it or not. So anyway, I encourage you to get the most recent edition, but if money is short or whatever and you want to get a little bit earlier edition, you can probably survive with that. And uh, so I think they'll even pay you to buy the earlier edition. I don't know. No, but they're, they're very cheap. They're a like dollar online. So. Um, so that's where that is, and you want to get it. And basically, this class is very exam heavy. It's maybe a, uh, a problem with this class that we use exams. As you see here, exams are 75% of your final grade. That's the main thing you need to do in this class is take the tests and do well on them to do well in this class. I don't think that's a great way of teaching, uh, just giving you tests. 
A better way to teach you sociology would be to require a series of increasingly in-depth research papers with drafts that I that you turned into me and I turned gave you feedback on and you but that's very labor intensive and you see already we got a very full house here and if I were to and this is only one of three sections of this class that I teach so if I were gonna try to handle that much writing so I guess I'm whining to you but I'm not whining I'm just pointing out that there's too many students for me to be able to teach sociology the ideal way um, what that maybe tells you is the state of California should invest more in higher education so that more instructors can be hired so that classes can be smaller. But in fact, we go in the opposite direction and try to make classes as big as possible. And if that's how they are, then uh, it's hard to uh, give everybody the individual attention they need. So that's my excuse. But that's maybe if you like tests, then it works in your favor in that you're not being asked to do a lot of writing in this class. Um, or a lot of research, you're mainly asked to regurgitate what uh, we'll be lecturing to you about and reading about in the book. And so multiple choice exams too, that's what we'll be using and those aren't really the best way of assessing your knowledge. But again, it becomes a matter of efficiency. And as we're gonna learn in this class actually, that's one of the key ideas of sociology is that uh, the modern world uh, sometimes does things because it's the efficient way to get things done but it's not necessarily the most humane or human way to get things done. So sometimes in our modern world, we just get treated like numbers or treated like just a little student filling out bubbles on a piece of paper rather than like human beings. And uh, I apologize for that, but maybe that helps you see some of what we're talking about in this class. Um, I'm reading that little thing and it says 75 in parentheses and then at the bottom it says 25 uh, percent. Yes. The math seems to not line up. 75. Um, it says 75% of final grade. Right. At the top. And right. The bottom line. It says, it says each exam will account for 25% of your grade. Oh, okay. So there's three exams together. They account for 75%. Okay. Uh, and then 10% for these little papers. They're not really papers. We're going to do a little writing exercise in here probably on Wednesday. And that'll be the first one. And if you're here and you do it, you get credit for it. And then the second one we'll do later in the class. They're writing exercises more than papers. And then attendance and participation. As you're gonna see, I don't take a lot of role. I don't like being a policeman. I don't think that's my job to be a policeman. Although I wish more policemen would take sociology classes. That would be good. Um, but uh, so I don't wanna police you. Uh, I'm supposed to take role every day, but it also takes up valuable class time. So I want you to please yourself, and I want you to have the attitude of knowledge is worth having, and I'm paying for it anyway, so I should come and get some knowledge. But if you're of the mindset, I should only do something if someone's going to punish me, if I don't, well, then you probably don't need to be here anyway, because you're not going to be someone who wants to learn sociology. So anyway, I'm not going to be taking the role after the first couple days. And it'll be up to you whether you want to come or not. And, but I will know whether you're somebody who participates in, or not. And you're not going to get an A in this class if you're not somebody who comes regularly and participates. You can pass, but you won't get an A. Does that make sense? And so I really encourage participation. And I sometimes, I have, this is my own issue, but I sometimes get frustrated when students won't participate. And then when I get frustrated, I get angry. And then I start being angry at the students. And that's not helpful. That doesn't make them want to participate. So I got to work on my own anger about it. But I really want you to participate. And I think the class will be a lot more interesting if we do. So it's a lecture class, but there's plenty of times for you to raise your hand, offer your own thoughts, your own theories, your own questions, your own arguments with me. And I won't get mad at you for arguing with me. I'll get mad at you for never opening your mouth. That's what would make me upset. Are we clear on that then? So it's an interactive, participatory kind of uh, environment we're after here. And as we're going to talk about later on in the class, when we talk about education in America, because that's obviously a big issue for our society, um, as we'll talk about then, I, you know, our society tends to emphasize the bottom line of learning. How much money can I make later on once I get my education? And to my mind, that's the wrong way to approach education, because if you're only here so you can get a grade, so you can get a degree, so you can get a job, so you can get money, so you can buy a big screen TV, well then, you're not gonna really enjoy sociology because that's not why you're here. You're here for a big screen TV for 10 years from now. 
So I'd rather you not be here because you want a big screen TV. I'd rather you be here because you want sociology, because you think that every day you're going to be getting something really valuable. Not the big screen TV necessarily, but like you'll know what sociology is and what Marx, who Marx Weber and Durkheim are and what capitalism is and how capitalism has changed over the last 400 years and those kinds of things. And if you get those kinds of ideas in your head, you're, I think you're getting something very valuable and hopefully you'll see it that way too. So that each day will be a rewarding day, not just the bottom line of the grade 16 weeks from now or however long it is. Does that make sense? So don't think about the bottom line, think about what you're getting right now, the, the intrinsic value of learning, not the extrinsic value. Anyway, we'll talk about that later in this class. Uh, extra credit, there will be ways to earn extra credit, I'll announce them. The main ways are to attend what I would call intellectually enriching events. In other words, like I was just saying, I hope in college your, your goal is to get knowledge and develop your mind and your uh, understanding. So I want to encourage that and this college provides a lot of ways for you to do that. We have something called Crossing Borders, Building Bridges, which is a series of events on campus. And those are ones I'll try to announce when they happen or you can go to them. And if you go to one and you turn into me a paper saying that you went to it and describing the event and trying to tie in an idea from this class into your discussion of that event, then I'll give you extra credit. And sociology is broad enough that almost anything that you go see, you'll be able to relate it to this class in some way. I'll also announce other events. For example, I hope this semester to myself organize something I call a presidential debate watching party uh, where we will get one of the big rooms here on campus and we'll have the TV tuned to the de presidential debate and we'll have free pizza for everyone and uh, we'll invite you to come watch the debate and I think it's really fun. I remember one of my few things I remember from college was getting together with other college students to watch political debates in our society because then college students talk about things and it can be very intellectually enriching and I want you to have that experience. So I'm going to hopefully hold one of those and if you go to that you could get extra credit if you turn in a paper about the event. So and then you can if there are events in the community that you want to go to and you think are intellectually enriching then you can propose those to me. Uh, we'll have to discuss it if you say well I want to go for example to the Sikh parade and I'll say why and you'll say because I'm Sikh and my family goes every year. Well, I might say that doesn't sound very intellectually enriching because you already know what that's all about and it's not really going to open your mind to new things. If you're somebody who's never been to the Sikh Parade, then yeah, I would definitely encourage you to go and get extra credit for that. So what is intellectually enriching? It depends on the person. If it's something you've done a million times already, it might not be all that intellectually enriching for you. If it's a new experience, a new group, a new social environment that you're putting yourself in, then it might be very worthwhile and I might give you extra credit. So you have to propose it to me. I'll also accept proposals for community service of some kind. If you're a member of an or a nonprofit organization or you want to help one out on the weekend and you want to go do some community service, you can propose that to me as a possible extra credit. There are some restrictions that I couldn't give extra credit for. For example, if you were working with your church to go get new members for your church, I couldn't give you extra credit for that. Anybody know why legally I couldn't give you extra credit for helping your church? Why would that be in this country, in this school? Anybody know? No idea? Well, because churches are religious institutions, and in America we have separation of church and state, meaning the government and religion are supposed to be separate. This school is a government institution. It's run by the state of California. Everybody in here, by the way, you're on public assistance. If you're going to the school, even if you're paying full price, you're not paying full price. The taxpayer is picking up most of your bill for being here. So uh, anyway, it's a public institution. Government money is being used to run it. So I can't use the money being used to pay me to be here to reward you for doing religious work. If your church is going out to convert new members, that's religious work and the government doesn't pay for that. Uh, if your church was going to build homes for the homeless and it wasn't trying to recruit new members, we probably can give you credit for that because that's a community service, not a uh, religious service. Does that make sense? So. Yeah, it's a political year. It's a good time to be talking about what does the Constitution say and what, is, what does that mean, separation of church and state, and what is a public university, and should it be free or not? That's a big discussion we've been uh, having in this society. 
Anyway, a uh, little statement of academic integrity there. Again, I think you're cheating yourself mainly. If you're here in college, you're choosing to be, you're paying for it. Knowledge should be its own reward. And if you're doing things to get a grade without getting knowledge, well, you're cheating yourself more than anyone. And it's not going to be looked on very nicely. In fact, it can get you kicked out of the school, so don't do it. But the better reason not to do it is because you're hurting yourself. You're just What a waste of your time and energy to pay for school and not learn anything. All right. Uh, basically, there's about people often ask me, is there homework in this class? Well, there's not a lot of things to turn in as the class goes on, but the homework is reading the book in conjunction with coming to class and paying attention to my lectures. So each week about we have a chapter of the reading of the, of the book that's assigned, and I'll also be lecturing in relation to that. And so your main tasks for most of the course are to come to class, take good notes on the lecture, read the book. The way I would recommend doing things is read the chapter before that week. So starting next week, we're going to be talking about chapter one. What is sociology? And it would be a good idea for you to start reading that now. And maybe just scanning it. Maybe looking at what does the chapter say? What are the headings? What are some of the pictures? What are some of these keywords? It won't make complete sense to you at the beginning because I haven't lectured yet. But I'm going to start lecturing on it next week. And if you've already cracked the book and seen some of the pictures and paid attention to what's in it, my lecture is going to make a lot more sense. And then once I've lectured on what is sociology, then you should go back and reread chapter one, but really read it that time and really try to get the material that's in it. Because it's going to make a lot more sense after my lecture. And you'll say, oh yeah, he was talking about that. Oh, he didn't talk about this. I guess I don't need to worry about this over here. So it'll make a lot more sense if you skim it first, come to the lecture, then read it for real after I've lectured. And then after several weeks, we'll take an exam. I uh, put that our first midterm exam isn't until week seven, which is really too long to go without an exam. Everyone keeps telling us, all the theorists that are studying students today and what helps them learn, students need earlier feedback than that on am I getting it, do I really get it or not? And I realized when they were telling us this, my social one students don't really get any real feedback till after week seven, that's too long. So I may change this. I need to look at my exam and see if I can break it up into smaller units and maybe change the syllabus a little bit. It'll be basically the same structure of the class, but instead of waiting till week seven to have an exam, we might have a shorter exam earlier than that. So hopefully, even though I'm calling this a contract that you're agreeing to, I'm expecting that you'll allow me to amend the terms of the contract slightly after the course of the semester uh, begins. But it'll still be the same basic requirements of reading a chapter a week and paying attention to my lectures. I'll also be posting lecture notes. My handwriting, a lot of you are going to get mad at. And maybe what you can do is uh, just close your eyes and try to listen to what I'm saying and write your own notes based on what I'm saying. It's also the case that it, you're lucky if you're in here you are really both a TV land student and a live student because you have access to Canvas. And that means you can watch this whole lecture again if you want to, or watch it as many times as you want if you really love it so much. But I'm just kidding. But you can uh, always, if you didn't get a certain thing when I was lecturing on it, you can go back and watch the video if you need to, or at least freeze frame the screen when it gets to that and try to read my writing. But the good news is after I've lectured, I will post the lecture notes typed up on, the, on Canvas. I don't like to give them out beforehand because I want you to kind of follow along with me, not already have it all out there for you. So I ask that you try to bear with me while I lecture, and then I'll give you all the lecture notes and everything will become clearer later. I'll also have a review guide. So before the exam, there'll be a review guide that tells, tells you all the things you need to know for the exam, or the, the, the topics you need to know. And then we'll have a review session in here where we'll cover those topics. So I make it really hard for you not to get an A in this class, frankly. But many people manage to not do it. But the point is, is if you're doing all the things I'm saying, you will learn the material and you'll be able to get an A. So you should try to do that. One thing people don't do a lot of the times, the ones who don't get A's, is they're not understanding things. And they don't admit that to themselves and then come in and talk to me or email me about it. 
And uh, if you're not following up with things, then you're also not doing everything you could do as a student to make sure you're getting material. And uh, the review guide's really helpful for that because you'll be able to look through and go, wait, did I really get that concept or not? Do I really understand it? And that will be a chance for you to email me and say, I'm not sure I really get what you know, uh, surplus value is. Can you go over surplus value again? And I will. So one thing about me, I didn't really talk about me yet, but I used to teach at Cal State Long Beach. That was a big university and a different kind of place than here. And one of the things they used to tell me at the university is they'd go, well, Flax, your students are doing too well. You don't have enough Fs. Your grade average is higher than other teachers. And I said, that's bad. If my students are doing well, that means I'm not a good teacher. And they said, it means you're not hard enough. You're not difficult enough. So then I started changing my assignments to make them really difficult. And I was like cheering when students would fail. I'm like, yeah, I got you. And uh, I don't think that's a good way to teach. I think it's much better to have a, a teacher be somebody who wants you to learn it and wants you to succeed. And here at Yuba College, they don't care how many A's I give. They want you to learn. And I want you to learn. So let's take it in that spirit that I'm here to help you learn. I'm not here to catch you being dumb or catch you being lazy or whatever. I'm here to make sure you learn sociology. And if you meet me halfway, we can try to do that. All right, what else can I tell you about this class? So uh, we were talking about the syllabus. Oh, um, so I'm not sure where I will post um, documents. I have to figure that out. I've been mostly using the portal to post things. But I think there are like files and pages and places where I can post things for you. So I'll probably be doing that. Um, those of you at home, one question you might ask is, well, how do I participate? If I'm at home just watching these lectures, how do I do that? And uh, we will have various discussions. And I will post various discussions for you to take part in. And so the people at home will be able to participate online. I was going to show you guys here, once you log on to Canvas, Pages is where you're going to find these archived lectures. And archived lectures, there's not any there. Today's the first one. They're being recorded right now. Once it's recorded and uploaded, it will be archived there. And you'll be able to go to that Pages link and go to Archive Lectures and see by date any lecture that we've done in here. So that's nice for you. Again, I don't take role after the first few days. And you don't need to tell me, hey, I'm going to miss next week because I have a dentist appointment. You can just plan to watch the video. If you weren't there for a particular day, just watch the lecture of the day you missed. It's a really nice thing. I almost think they should do this for every class. But then no one would ever come to their classes, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, a nice feature of this class. Hi. Hi. Oh, can we handle after class, since I'm in the middle of class right now? Yes. Thanks. Sorry. OK. And uh, so that was for you guys to see that you're able to go on here, too. So anyway, so about a chapter a week, read it, skim it first, come to lecture, then uh, read it. And we're going to have three exams. The final exam is then. So I'm not sure what I'm leaving out. Anybody have questions at this point? No? OK, I want to take roll for the first time and one of the only times. Mainly, I want to see who's not here today so I can drop them. And I also want to get the correct pronunciation of your name, if I need that. How many in here don't think you're enrolled yet? It looks to me like there's more people in here than I have on my list. OK, well, I'm going to read the roll now. Maybe there'll be some people that I can drop here. OK, Manuel Aguirre. Here. Where? Uh, Yajahira Casillas. Oh, here. It's Yahira. Yahira Casillas. Uh, Manuel Castellanos. Uh, Ray Vant Chauhan. Sarah Comarsh. Sarah Comarsh. Okay. Sarbjat Dale. Sarbjat Dale. Destiny Desa. Destiny Desa? Uh, Pavin Daisy, Crystal Diaz, Justin Forrester, Here. Patricia Gonzalez, Ian Hamlin, Here. Deborah Hansen, 
Deborah Hansen? Problem over there? No? Uh, Gurleen Core? Cindy Kine? Keen? Anand Kumar? Elizabeth Lopez? Somebody might have got cut off here. Oh no, Juan Mendoza? Here. Mario Miramontes? Here. Uh, Vivian Moa? Uh, Riley Monday? Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Andrew Neville? Here. Uh, Ana Yeli Ortiz? Here. Ruben Paez? Here. Uh, Peggy Lee Perkins? Here. Kent Pond? Here. Clarissa Rodriguez? Clarissa Rodriguez? Tyler Rowland? Holly Satterfield? Kayla Saucedo? Manmeet Singh, Here. Delaney Tome, April Thompson, John Throm, Christian Valdez, Thomas Vang, Janet Vasquez, Darren Weeks. All right, anybody I did not call? Are you, did you think you were enrolled? Oh, you haven't enrolled yet? Well, then you wouldn't be on my list. I would have to be a psychic. Um, so if you want to add, I don't know really if I have room. It looks like uh, there is an empty seat there, and I guess, I guess I can take you. So if you want to add, come and see me after class, and I'll sign your ad form. Um, after today, I don't know if I'll be accepting any ads, but we'll see. Maybe I can say a few more nasty things to drop people. No, I don't know. Or get people to drop is what I'm saying. I don't know what nasty things I could say. Um, I'm really mean. Could I say that? No. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'll sign them. I have a feeling a few people, generally speaking, after the first week or two, you don't always get full attendance. So we probably will always have enough chairs, except on test day. But we'll see how that goes. All right. Um, and test day, for those of you at home who may not understand this part of the class, you're just going to be watching these lectures, but the, for the three exams, or possibly four, if I break up the first one into two, uh, you will come to one of the testing centers on campus or in the district. There's actually several, not just on this campus, and take the exam there. So those are the only times you need to come to campus. The rest of you, you'll just take your exams in here on our normal class days when our exam happens. All right, any questions then on this class? I'll just say a little bit about me. Uh, so my name is Mark, and I'm the one full-time sociology teacher here at Yuba College. We have several adjuncts, people who teach uh, part-time classes, but I'm the full-timer. And uh, so I've been here about, what is it, nine years now. And uh, I came from Cal State Long Beach, where I used to be a professor down there. And you might wonder why I changed. I kind of gave you a hint about that. Um, universities like that are more focused on research than they are on teaching. And they don't really care that much if you're a good teacher or not. Uh, they just want to know that you're a difficult teacher, I guess. But they, uh, they care more about publication and writing on the part of the professor than about teaching. Me, I care more about teaching. I enjoy it more. I feel like I have more of an impact than I do. The few research articles I've done, very few people ever read them. So it's hard to see how you're having much impact on the world through research when you're a sociologist. I mean, other kind of scientists they can make discoveries that really change the world. But sociology, I think sometimes we make more of our impact by getting people to think more deeply about their lives. And the classroom is a great place to have that happen. So I like being a teacher. I feel like that's a good way to be a sociologist. And here, you might be surprised, a community college, this one in any way, actually pays me much more than Cal State Long Beach did. So another reason I ended up leaving Cal State Long Beach to teach up here was if it was a 40, immediate 40% raise. So that's pretty nice. So, uh, and I like being in an area that seems to need sociologists more than, you know, Southern California is a well-developed area with lots of very smart people running things. We got smart people up here too, but sometimes we seem to have problems up here that, uh, sociologists could help with, like poverty, like drug addiction, like family problems, like uh, 
a lot of racial and ethnic tensions in this community. And so those kinds of things are things that sociologists can really help with. And what I like to think of is this, you know, this community around this college is like a good laboratory for understanding sociology. All the things we're going to be talking about in here are things you can see just by going out into the community around here. So I feel like sociology is needed maybe up here, you know, as much or more as it's needed in a, in a place like Long Beach. So that's what I'm doing here. And um, one of my main focuses in my research, although I'm not required to do research here, the reason I'm mentioning it is to get you to start thinking about what is sociology and what can it offer you. And one of the main things I've studied is what's called the transition to adulthood. That's, uh, you know, all of us are children at some time, but we often then become youth, and then we're adults. But uh, people are growing up later than used to be the case. So a good question we can think about just on the first day here is, why are people growing up later? And when I mean growing up later, what do you think I mean? Well, a good example would be something like, when do you get married? My mom and dad got married when they were 19 and 21, respectively. And they're still married, and they're in their, almost in their 80s. Me, I didn't get married until I was 36 the first time, or actually 34. And uh, didn't start having kids until I was 36. And I'm not that weird. Most people my age aren't getting married and having kids until they're in their 30s, whereas the previous generation was having, getting married and having kids in their early 20s. So why is that? Why are Americans, quote unquote, growing up later? And we could ask you, what are your theories about that? What, this is data. I just gave you some data, not much. But I can tell you that the average age of first marriage is 10 years higher than it used to be. That's data. That's information. Theory is when we as sociologists or any kind of scientist tries to explain the data. What's going on there? Why is that? And so I'll ask you, do you have any theories? Why would people be taking longer to grow up nowadays? People live longer, so they just feel like I have more time. I don't need to hurry up and get married and have kids because I'm going to live longer. You might be right that the, every stage of life is getting longer, not just the stage of life between youth and adulthood, but the stage of life, middle age is longer, old age is longer. And what we may be looking at is what's called a more of a distended life course, where the whole life course is longer and thinner than it used to be, or stretched out. Uh, possible. What type of jobs you can get right out of high school are a lot different now. Than In what way are they different? Well, I mean, 10 years ago, maybe you would be able to like leave high school and get a, a factory job that paid pretty good with benefits, so you could start a family. Nowadays, you almost have to go to college, you know, to, you know, because we're going to like a, a tech type economy instead of a industry. Okay, so you're saying the changing structure of our society, the changing economy of our society is affecting people's individual life choices and what they can or can't do at a certain age. Uh, you may be onto something there, yeah? Culture's a big change too. Back in the day when our grandparents and my parents were getting married, they were younger, more was expected. The previous generation that got out of the war, they were like, this is how you do it. And now you have millennials, you have all these different social cliques that are like, no, go do your thing. Why do you need to get married? Why can't you go off and do this or do that? And so it's not that people have to it's wait longer. They're just choosing yeah. to do things later because our, our grandparents didn't have these kinds of choices. And if you were a woman, you got out of high school and you started having babies. And you were a man, you got out of high school, you went and started a family. So, you're, so a big question is, is this a cultural change or a structural one? You guys just defined two of the main types of sociological theories there can be. You can either look at, is it the structure of society that's changing, or is it the culture of society? And oftentimes, sociologists are debating this kind of thing. What are we talking about when we're talking about the structure of society? I think we're talking about who has what in terms of things like money, jobs, education. 
And if we're trying to understand why are people growing up later, we might need to look at the changing job structure and education structure and income structure of America and understand whether people have the means to start having babies and at what age they reach that. I wasn't able to start getting married or attract even a mate, you know, with a good job and being able to pay for a family until I was in my 30s. I couldn't ask somebody to come live in my crappy studio apartment or certainly not babies. And it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I had the means to be able to be a provider. On the other hand, why did it take me that long? I mean, people may be choosing. Some people say it's a Peter Pan syndrome, that pe pe Peter, people just don't want to grow up. They'd rather be lost boys their whole life. Uh, they'd rather play video games and hang around the mall. Uh, you know, you, you put it differently. You were nicer about it. They, ha they have other interests besides starting a family and getting married, and they want to do other things besides that. So maybe it's not who has what that explains it, but people's thoughts and feelings, things going on in their hearts and minds that make them choose. So in that case, we would say, who thinks? or feels what, when we're talking about culture, we're talking about people's deep feelings and their thoughts and beliefs. So we're talking about things like beliefs, attitudes, religion, pop culture. You know, there's been a lot of movies about people who won't grow up. Movies like Back to School and Slacker and Arrested Adulthood and all these, almost any movie with Adam Sandler or Will Ferrell is a movie about people that won't grow up or can't grow up or have some problem growing up. So we have a lot of culture about this too. And a good question to ask as a sociologist is, well, which is it? Is it the structure of society that's making people act a certain way? They can or can't do certain things based on their money and education and jobs? Or is it that people are choosing to do or not do certain things based on their beliefs and attitudes and their cultural way of thinking? And really, as we'll see in this class, a lot of issues come down to this basic thing. For example, like teen pregnancy. Around here, we got a lot of teen pregnancy in Linda, this area around this campus. Where I grew up, Santa Barbara, California, we didn't have a lot of teen pregnancy. So what explains why one community has a lot of it and another community doesn't? Again, it's a data issue. That's what the data show. More teen pregnancy here than there. Well, is it a structural thing? Do we need to look at things like poverty and jobs or the lack thereof in this community to explain why young girls are getting pregnant? Or do we need to look at people's beliefs about what's okay or not okay to do, how they view families, what their morals are, what their ethics are? Or is it both? In most cases, as we're going to see in this class, to really understand the culture of a people, like why do people get married or you know, start having sex young around here? Maybe it reflects the structure here, but people's beliefs and views often are related to what they have or don't have in their community. But what they have or don't have in their community is often affected by what they believe or think. For example, we're not going to get a lot of jobs in this community if there's a lot of young people running around having babies with each other, because companies aren't going to want to invest and build factories and things like that. So it's a, it's a circle. It's a, it's a more, it's a not just one or the other kind of thing. In sociology, to try and understand why people do what they do, we need to look at the economic and structural side of things, but we also need to look at the hearts and minds of people and understand how both are related to each other. Anyway, so that's a lot of what we'll be doing in this class is looking at issues and trying to understand the cultural and structural factors that get people to behave the way they are. And, you know, we could ask similar questions. Well, why do people support or not support Donald Trump, for example, or Hillary Clinton, for example? And those, again, come down to structural issues, but also cultural ones, and how the two are intertwined in a lot of cases. All right, giving you a little more sociology than you thought you were going to get on the first day, but that's just a little taste of how this class will be. You could get to see my handwriting. If you can't stand it, you might want to drop. If you don't want to talk about things like Donald Trump and politics and teen pregnancy and things like jobs and economics, uh, you might not want to take this class. On the other hand, if those are things that interest you and you want to sink your teeth into it or you want to be able to have, one of the things I think people get out of this class is they're able to participate in conversations that before they took the class, they felt lost in the conversation and weren't sure they knew what to say or what they felt. 
And I think one of my most rewarding things is when people say, I now have the terms and words to use to be able to understand these conversations people are having. And so I think it's really important in America that young people especially be participating in these conversations about what kind of country do we want to have? What kind of society do we want to have? What, why is it the way it is now? How can we get it to be something different than it is? And uh, sociology is a great tool for having those conversations. And so really that's what I think of this class is sociology is a tool. And if you're never going to go on to be a professional sociologist or never going to go on to use sociology in your job, you'll still have this tool that you can use in a lot of other areas of your life. So. Hopefully you'll find it valuable in that sense. All right, any questions? No? All right, log on to Canvas, download the syllabus. You should print it out and plan to bring it with you to class probably. Have a folder for this class. Make sure you get the textbook. And, uh, and I'll see you on Wednesday.
Ha, ha, ha. 